Hardy three for his last 37. That's over his last nine games. Lines this one out towards straightaway center field, drifting out toward right center. Trout at the wall, leaps up, and he makes the catch. Mike Trout with another spectacular grab. There is out number two. Now that is Tory Hunter, circa 2002 against Barry Bonds in the All-Star game. That was an unbelievable play. I mean, he had to go so far. We talked about how spacious it is here at center field at Camden Yards. Full leap. I mean, he's way over the wall. That's insane. That's an unbelievable play by Mr. Mike Trout. Hello, baseball world. How about that catch by Mike Trout? Looks like a human highlight reel or something you'd see on an MLB video game. Anyway, today we're talking about outfield play. And the other day I was talking to Angry Mike's father, who I call the boss, and he said, hey, Pete, how about you do a video on outfield play? And you can't say no to the boss, so here's a video on outfield play. We're going to look at a couple things. We're going to look at setup, how to catch the fly ball, and then a lot of discussion about the ball that is in on the outfielder with infielders converging on the ball as well and the communication that has to take place and the good and the bad that can occur when that play happens. So let's take a look at outfield play and maybe someday we can make catches like this guy here, Mike Trout. After we've done our pre-pitch routine, which is basically just trying to identify what we will do with the ball if it is hit to us, we then get into our ready position. This picture has three setups, two of which are very good, one which is poor. But again, major leaguers are a different creature, a different animal, and they can do things that the average player cannot. But the picture on the left and the right are good setups where the weight is on the balls of our feet. Our feet are about shoulders width apart. Hands are to the sides. Eyes tracking the ball at the hitting zone. And this allows us to get some movement and anticipate the ball being hit as it gets through the hitting zone so that we can move in and out, right and left, or on diagonals. The setup in the middle is unacceptable in, in our opinion because the weight now is put on the flat part of the feet you can't react as quickly, and anytime we're putting hands on knees in any position that we play, it just allows us to be that much slower in reaction to the ball, so please do not set up this way in any position. All right, let's take a look at catching the fly ball. Here's a shot of one of my high school players from a few years back in catching a fly ball and this is exactly how I want the fly ball caught. Notice that he's got two hands to the ball not so much to make sure that the ball goes in the glove but more importantly to be able to exchange the ball out of the glove and make a throw. Further he's catching the ball above his eyes he's not catching it down by his chin or his chest he's catching it above his eyes to ensure that the ball will secure into the glove his glove side foot is forward, his throwing foot is back as a righty. A lefty would do the opposite, and this will allow him to generate momentum as he catches the ball and transfers the ball into a throw. Now, once again, with the outfield, just like with the infield, we have to use our feet to get into this position. We have to work real hard and get behind the ball and come through it as we catch it just like we would a ground ball when at all possible. Sometimes it's not possible but sometimes it is and we have to be able to use our feet and not be lazy. So we need to catch as many fly balls as possible in this manner even balls that are left and right of us and we need to attempt to try to catch fly balls that are behind us in this manner as well and we're going to utilize a strategy called a drop step and a drop step allows us to track a ball behind us in hopes that we can get behind it and come through it. Sometimes we just can't. So more on drop steps, let's take a look at a quick video from Ripken Baseball 
about how to properly execute the outfield drop step. And by the way, infielders, you can utilize this as well on pop-ups. I'm Bill Ripken and Ripken Baseball's tip of the day is outfield play, specifically the drop step followed by the crossover. A lot of times in youth baseball that ball goes over our head, hits the back pedal and then we fall over. The proper two steps, first one is this, drop. The second one is simply this, the crossover, then we go and get it. I got some boys here that are going to execute this, I want you to pay attention. First move, one two and we're going to get it we're going to go catch some fly balls rob some doubles go very nice nice case okay, square to tim good drop and go very nice lucas all right right hold up one second get back in here go ahead now when you drop i still want you looking at tim don't leave though you know where you're going drop and go go Good. Good. Go ahead. Attaboy, Case. I like that one. One last one. I need a game winner. Rob this gapper. Go. Nice. Good. I like that one. Very nice. OK, let's sum this up. Youth baseball world. Ball goes over our head. We're backpedaling out in the outfield. We don't want to do that. It's better to take a split second longer, read it, Take the proper step, in this case, the drop step, followed by the crossover step. That's covering the gaps the Ripken way. Thanks, Bill Ripken. Here's a shot of Atlanta Braves' Cameron Mabin tracking a fly ball after a drop step. He uses his feet to get behind the ball, tracks the ball above his eyes, gets his throwing hand and glove in a proper position, glove side foot forward, here he is again. Watch how he uses his feet to make an adjustment. Doesn't catch the ball to the side of his body. He uses his feet to make an adjustment to catch the ball above his head. One other thing about approaching the fly ball. Anytime you're running for a fly ball, you must keep your glove tucked to keep yourself at a good running speed. And you only extend the glove when you're ready to catch the ball. in the air to shallow right center and it's going to drop one run is scored everybody moves up 90 popped it up and that was his pitch and it drops oh my good well we've all seen our share of these types of balls in games drop and it even happens in the big leagues and I don't know if it's from a fear of collision or a lack of communication or aggressiveness, but one thing is for certain, anytime a ball is popped up into the infield or the outfield, the ball must be caught. It cannot land. And that's the mindset that our players need to have to record an out. Outfielders, you have the best angle on these balls as you are tracking them forward. You're coming in on the ball. So you need to aggressively pursue these balls and call off the infielders to make the play. You cannot shy away from the ball because you think the infielder might catch it. Infielders, you need to drop step and run aggressively back towards this ball if it is yours and call off an outfielder if you think you should be the one catching it. But remember, if you call it, you need to catch it. But no one should shy away from this ball until proper communication has been made. Otherwise, the ball will land and will allow an offensive team to extend an inning and possibly score some runs. Let's take a look at some rules on this type of ball. Number one, the ball must be caught. Outfielders have a priority on this ball because they are coming in on the ball. Infielders can never assume that the outfielder will catch the ball 
So that's why they have to continue to go hard for that ball. Communication is a must between all defenders that are con converging on the ball. We use the sequence me, 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 you, you, you to be able to talk to each other and catch the ball. And finally, outfielders and infielders must aggressively pursue the ball until it is determined who will catch it. But one thing's for certain, the ball cannot land. Let's take a look at a couple great plays on this type of ball. The bullpen solid, the 2-1, popped up. Out goes Barney. In comes Puig, and it's Barney! Oh, what a... Wainwright second, Beckett third, he's swinging, and a fly ball lifted into shallow right, a sliding catch, and back to the bag goes Roja. Sounded like a broken bat into shallow center field. Davis coming on to make a nice running catch. Active players against right-handed uh, pitching. He's a 3-0-3 career hitter. He loops one to left field, going out Gallo, and Elvis, a slide, and Elvis came up with it. Get it down low. They pop it up. <laughs> right center, shallow. Laurie backpedaling, and now Reddick, and Laurie caught it. A little pop, shallow left center. Simmons going out, still going out. Over the shoulder, grab Simmons, what a play. So, Forge fans, let's get out on that field and let's catch these types of fly balls so that we can eliminate things like this where we don't communicate and we don't go aggressively to the ball. And if we do those sorts of things, we're going to get out of innings quicker. We're going to eliminate extra run scoring. We're going to eliminate more pitches thrown by the pitcher. And you're going to feel great about yourself because you made a great play.